Okay, so let's see if we can manage our EFW firewall router from our virtual machine, Windows XP virtual machine, connecting on the internal local area network of the Indian firewall on the 192.168.0 network. So to do this, I'm going to open up my virtual machine. This is pretty cool. Okay, so there's the virtual machine. This is a Windows XP virtual machine virtual box, right? And what I'll do is I'll just open up Internet Explorer right there's Internet Explorer in VirtualBox once again okay make it a little bit bigger and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the um, EFW on the management interface that it told me about remember the EFW here it is the virtual machine virtual router there it is it says that it's located its management URLs 192.168.0.1 on port 10443 and also notice it's HTTPS that it wants us to connect on. So we'll do that. So we'll go here and we'll say HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.1 and then notice I've already got it set up here colon not semicolon colon 10443 and hit enter and it says hey security alert do you want to connect? We'll say yes and then we have to put in our administrative password for our EFW firewall router, which you hopefully, hopefully already set up when you set up your Indian firewall. So it's going to be admin and then the password. All right. And put it in again here. Put it in. There we go and now I'm connected to my Indian firewall router through my virtual machine Windows XP and when I go in here I can go right in here and I'll scroll down I need to open this up a little bit more so we can get a better view of it and it's a management interface which is pretty cool let's open this up more more it's very very cool and I can scroll down and I can see that my main uplink, this is my WAN port, right, is 192.168.1.132, right? So this is my IP address that I was given to by my actual Linksys wireless router. So we can go back to the um, diagram and we can fill that in, 1.132. So the IP address that the EFW router got from the actual router it's 192.168.1.132 okay so that's pretty interesting so there it is there's the network that I have set up that I'm running right now and it involves an EFW uh, it involves an EFW uh, firewall router virtual machine a Windows XP virtual machine and, and my actual computer that these two guys are actually running on they're actually running on my Windows 7 actual computer which is connected to an actual router which is connected to the internet so now the next step is to take a peek at it now you can see here that we'll go here and we'll say status right DHCP is running because we kicked we picked up a DHCP address right so services right DHCP notice services DHCP server enabled right and we can see that it leased out these addresses uh, this address right now to this machine right here 0 0.148 and these are old leases okay and so there's the DHCP server. So what we're going to be talking about today, though, is running VPN. So I'm going to click on VPN. And now I've got the VPN open, and we can talk about how we set up uh, VPN tunnels to our um, network through the Endian firewall. And that'll be pretty interesting. So I mean, once again, I'm in Endian firewall, VPN. So let's configure it. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, when, when somebody VPNs into our network, they're going to get a special address. They're going to get a zero dot, let's say, 200 address to, let's say, 
220. So they'll get an address between 200 and 220. Okay, and and then what we can do is we can hit save and restart. All right, that sounds good. Now let's make sure that doesn't overlap with our DHCP. On our DHCP, our addresses. What were our least addresses? DHCP settings was 0 0.100 to 0 0.150. So that was our pool of addresses in DHCP that we're handing out, right? So that'll be fine because that doesn't overlap. 100 to 150 does not overlap 200. So then we'll go back to VPN. All right, here's the VPN addresses we're going to hand out 200 to 220 and then we'll enable the VPN server and we'll save and restart okay great now we need to create an account alright so we'll go to accounts and we'll say add account username we'll say test and then password we'll say test and then verify password test right and we don't have to really set up anything else. This is this should be fine. So um, okay, this is good. All right, we could push name servers, but let's see what happens with just the minimal type of configuration. So we'll hit save. Password must have more than five characters. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll say test pass and test pass. All right, that's fine. And save. Okay, now once you save a add a user account, it warns you that the account's been added, right? There it is, username test, right? But for this to take effect, we need to restart the OpenVPN server. So we'll restart the OpenVPN server. Now, for this user to connect, they're going to need to have the CA certificate, the security certificate. So we're going to need to download this. So we'll download that. All right, and we'll save it to our desktop. EFW Dan's Virtual Lab PEN. All right. So there we go. We just saved that. We're going to need that. Okay. We're also going to need a few more things. We're going to need to know, let's go to advanced. We're going to need a few more things. We're going to need to know the port that we're going to be connecting on. The port is 1194. Okay. And the protocol is UDP. All right. So we, we needed to know that. All right. And this is good. So these are the that's the name servers that are going to be pushed all that authentication type PSK username and password notice we already downloaded the certificate fine what we needed to know was this 1194 port and protocol UDP alright back to accounts right back to server configuration let's take a look at the client now that we have the open VPN server running and restarted right we need to talk about how do we get the client working so that a client can connect and we can connect through our user test so let's go to open VPN client and open VPN tunnel and it says here add tunnel configuration this is going to be gateway to gateway so we're not doing a gateway to gateway we're just running a client so we're not going to need this. We don't have another Endian firewall running VPN that we're connecting to. So all we need to do is get an open VPN client so that we can use it and configure it. Okay, so now that we have VPN enabled on our firewall router, right, enabled, we're handing out addresses 200 to 220, right? We've got an account set up called uh, test with a password test pass. We need to um, basically test this out. And we need to test this out from a client that has an open VPN client, uh, an OPN, open VPN client. So let's go back to our diagram once more to explain this. So the idea is now with VPN activated that somebody from the internet or 
from another network, not, ne not the internal network, but from somewhere out here, meaning out here, maybe even meaning out here, right? Or out here, or even out here, could VPN tunnel into the EFW through the EFW and be given an address on the internal network like an address let's say something like this uh, starting at let's say starting at you know 192.168.0.200 right so that's the address that we had said we were going to give out right so this would be a um, essentially a VPN address that we would be giving out. This would be a VPN address that we would be giving out. 